Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about thermoregulation. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So basically, thermoregulation is the ability of an organism to maintain a core body temperature that is 37 degrees Celsius in most of the cases. Thermoregulation is also called as heat regulation. The hypothalamus, which is present in our brain, it also acts as a thermostat. It regulates the body temperature. Based on the temperature regulation, the animals are classified into ectothermic and endothermic. Ectothermic animals. So they are commonly called cold-blooded animals. They generally gain heat from external sources. They produce a very less amount of heat to keep their body warm. They have a low metabolic rate. Amphibians, fish, lizards and other reptiles are ectothermic animals. Endothermic animals. They are commonly called warm-blooded animals. So basically we are endothermic animals. They develop most of the heat mainly from their body's metabolism. They produce heat to keep their body warm. And they have very high metabolic rate. So we, the mammals and birds are endothermic animals. So now we will see the mechanism of thermoregulation. If our body needs to warm up, the mechanisms of thermoregulation include vasoconstriction, thermogenesis, hormonal thermogenesis. These three ways. So we will talk about them one by one. First is vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction means the blood vessels become narrower. So what happens? First, the blood vessels under the skin receive signals that our body needs to warm up. Once they get the signals, they become narrower. Once the blood vessels are narrow, there is the reduction of blood flow and the body retains heat and it gets warm. This is called vasoconstriction. Next is thermogenesis. So here the body's organs, they produce heat and the body gets warm. Next process is hormonal thermogenesis. So you can understand the hormones are involved in this process. So thyroid gland releases hormones and the body's metabolism is increased in that case which produces more heat and it helps to maintain the stable internal body temperature. If our body needs to cool down, the mechanism of thermoregulation include sweating and vasodilation. What is sweating? We all know that sweat glands first receive signals. Which signal? That our body needs to cool down. So first they get that signal and they release sweat. Evaporation of sweat helps to cool down our skin. Vasodilation. So vasodilation is just the opposite process of vasoconstriction. Here, Again, the blood vessels under the skin receive signals which signal that our body needs to cool down that signal and the vessels become wider and the blood flow gets increased since the blood vessels are wider now which releases body's heat hence our body gets cooler. Let's talk about the importance of thermoregulation. First, 
to return the body to homeostasis. That means the temperature of the body should be always maintained. In order to do that, the thermoregulation helps in this way. It controls the loss or gain of heat. It maintains an optimum temperature range. Like for human, the healthy body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius to 37.8 degrees Celsius. So this is our optimum temperature. Now if the body temperature falls from 37 degrees Celsius, then a person may suffer from hypothermia. Hypo means less. So the temperature is less than 37 degrees Celsius. In that case, the person may suffer from hypothermia. Hypothermia leads to cardiac arrest, brain damage, as well as death. Factors affecting hypothermia are, so under functioning thyroid gland or usage of alcohols and drugs, they all lead to hypo, hypothermic condition. If the body temperature rises from 37.8 degrees Celsius, then a person may suffer from hyperthermia. Hyper means more. So the temperature is more than 37.8 degrees Celsius. It leads to brain damage as well as death. Factors affecting hyperthermia are exercise, fever, digestion, hormonal changes and infections. So they cause hyperthermic condition. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.